hear it. Um, <laughs> Julie, please, uh, if you don't mind pulling up uh, your slides for us and um, let's get going with the Raw Roundup 2019's keynote session. Let By the way, how are you, Julie? Because I don't think that, I don't think that we started there. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Last year I was in Vancouver doing this, and this year I'm on my farm. So I apologize in advance if you hear chickens or my pig or my dog walking around or whatever. I feel like if there's any of dogs naturally that would we like have that, that stuff. appropriate, it would yeah. be this one. So well, it's yeah. pretty like it's pretty raw roundupy in a way he could come here and like round up all the animals that are actually living in my house so um Love it. yeah I'm, I'm good i'm good busy perfect so please feel free Ready? to uh take it away and enlighten us all right i will so um when oh oh why is it doing this don't be doing this to me there we go hang on let me just make sure okay cool um so when Dana asked me to do the keynote lecture, I was like, oh boy, here we go. I was really, uh, I was really happy, but then I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Well, everybody's like talking about all these awesome things. And I was really struggling with, with what I was going to talk about. And so I came up with this idea. So you'll see Aaron Love uh, when I was walking my dog, Henry, who's lying beside me. And, uh, I really am like talking about my farm and stuff. I really am blessed to, to live on this place. It's super isolated. It's really rugged. Sometimes it scares the, you know, what out of me if I'm out here alone and we have like a huge storm or something, but it's amazing. And it's just got so much wisdom, like, like the energy of this farm and, and just nature in itself. I'm being out here. Maybe I'm just becoming a hermit. I don't, I don't know, but no, but really, I think it's just this, like, when you're around it and you're really, really, really in it, there is so much wisdom in, in nature. It's incredible. So I was walking Henry and I thought, um, you know, it's all kind of here. Everything is like, we live, we literally live in the world's largest natural pharmacy. And we just have to kind of look around us and pay attention so I stopped and that's exactly what I did. I looked around and I saw um, a group of deer grazing on one side. And then I was, I was trying to really ground myself. And then I actually did. And I felt the earth and I was like, okay, this is cool. And then I kind of just looked out at the ocean and it's quite windy here all the time. And it was windy. And I just took this big breath and I just like, kind of went down on my knees and I was hugging Henry and I just about, I was almost started to cry, but like happy cry. And I just thought like soil, sea, air, and love. And it just kind of went through my head just like that. And I quickly grabbed my phone, my, my pocket, and I just basically said it. And then I'm like, okay, well, what am I going to do with that? And what I, what I'm doing is I'm basically what it did is it made me feel like the connection to the earth and to, to everything that's sort of around us, but to all living things. And part of all living things, we share one thing very much in common. And that's if you're an animal, you have a cell and our cells are so like Dana was saying, was so are so incredibly important and really often not looked at. So you're going to have to try and bear with me because as usual, I put um, like a three hour lecture in 45 minutes. So as soon as we start this, it's going to be like, and uh, we'll get to the end and then hopefully I'll be able to come back up and recap, recap some of it. And it's, it, it is kind of all over the place because health embodies so much stuff, right? So to talk about, it in um, it's very hard for me to talk about your dog's health or or our health by staying focused on kind of one thing. Mm -hmm. I I didn't even have my um, uh, I I didn't even have my um, uh, I don't know my clinic wasn't even run like that. I I really looked at things from a from a much bigger perspective. 
So just bear with me. Everything's going to sort of come into place and, and you'll see what I'm talking about because I talk about a lot more than just this, but hopefully we'll bridge it all together. So before we get going, I just want to take a moment to remind all of you guys about how amazing you really all are. And thank you for showing up. And sometimes I've noticed the most incredible, strong, open-minded, protective, funny, courageous people are the ones that hang out the most with dogs. And obviously these sound, the attributes sound familiar. Your dog, I think, is rubbing off on you. At least I hope they are because I think they're very smart. Uh, their unconditional love spreads like wildfire, makes us all better human beings all the way around. The love for our dogs keep us searching for more ways to answer questions like, why are dogs getting more cancer? and chronic disease than ever before. Studies suggest that medical error now is the third leading cause of death in the US. The most stunning statistic, however, is that the total number of deaths caused by conventional medicine is nearly 800,000 per year. It's evident that American medical system is the leading cause of death and injury in the US. And by contrast, the number of deaths attributed to heart disease in 2001 was 699,000, while numbers of deaths attributed to cancer was 553. When vets make mistakes, we don't have records like that of how many animals die from medical error because most complaints or deaths are not even investigated. It simply doesn't happen. When there's a complaint that could have been a result of an error, more times than not, it's dismissed by a board that is actually self-governing. And my phone keeps going off, guys. Sorry about that. Um, and I'm not slagging vets, not by any means. I'm just merely stating a fact that we don't have this kind of um, statistics with animals because it's, it's just simply not... Um, looked at the same as it is with people. The next really interesting statistic is that the higher the country's income bracket, the higher the incident is of cancer. Um, this is so this is fascinating to me and maybe could be an investigative lecture all on its own. But for now, these statistics are really similar to what we're seeing in practice with your dogs, which makes total sense to me. So when you just I'm just going to fly through this, like I said, but when you look at the low income countries and low middle income countries, cancer is not even on here. So we don't even see the word cancer um, on either of these charts. When we look at upper middle income countries and high income countries, we're already looking at lung cancer, we're looking at liver cancer, we're looking at stomach cancer, and then the top, the highest income, we're looking at breast cancer, colon, rectum cancer, brain, uh, uh, trachea, bronchitis, lung cancers. So like, it's kind of bizarre that, um, and we're gonna get into this because we are seeing this in your dogs. So why is this happening? So my thoughts are if we could just use the tools and the resources that we have as a higher income country, we could take those resources and put them towards actually preventing disease. Instead, we alter them from viruses, which is what you saw a lot in the lower income. We're altering them from viruses and bacterial pathologies, what you're seeing. So we're getting rid of those, which is awesome. But what's happening then, we're, we're turning them into iat iatrogenic disease, which is uh, diseases caused by treatments or drugs chronic disease and cancers. We know that many diseases in low income countries can stem from quality of water, starvation, poor nutrition, basic things that sustain a healthy lifestyle. But what we're doing now that we no longer have those concerns, but instead we've shifted us into cancer and autoimmune disease. What with all of our knowledge are the prevalent types of diseases in higher income countries, actually the ones that are creating more research, more drugs, chronic law, law chronic lifelong suffering. I found this quote really interesting from this doctor. Poor and less educated people are suffering from what's, what once was considered diseases of the rich. In higher income countries now that we have known this way is the case for some time. Relatively few resources, however, have been invested in the issue in lower income settings. 
So our dogs are actually, and the reason I'm bringing this in together like this is our dogs are actually living in both categories. Not not only are we seeing cancer, autoimmune diseases out of control in our higher income countries or the countries that we live in, but also the lower income diseases like obesity, diabetes, et cetera. In human medicine, we know that these are outcomes of fast food, commercially processed diets, lack of exercise, and other lifestyle choices. The problem is veterinary medicine has fallen way behind in the human medical research in that area. So what does this have to do with your dogs? For me, it's four words. The pharmaceutical industrial complex, which is a multi-trillion dollar matrix that continues to throw out drug after drug, vaccine after vaccine, which causes surgery after surgery, test after test, and research after research. Unfortunately, all its accountability is held in the hands of every government agency that's ultimately supported by them and something that you could kind of relate to the food chain. You don't actually see who's eating who, you just know that one cannot survive without the other. An example of this of these are when doctors recommend birth control to teenage girls who are not even close to being sexually active, yet just to regulate the hormones. I'm going to move my little pixie thing from here up here so that we can see it better. Ah, come on, go up there. Um, why is this doing this? I don't know how to make this smaller. Oh, well, maybe Julio can tell me, but oh, well. Um, what? Julio can help. Can I, how can I move this over? Uh, move the slides over? Move this thing over so I can actually, it's not, does it make it, is it bugging everybody being in the corner like that or is it fine? Uh, no one can see it. Oh, no one can see it but me. No, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> you just helped me then. Awesome. Okay, it's, just, it's just my, uh, it's my, it's my mushroom tea actually. Okay. <laughs> same thing in the corner anyways okay i can just see my picture and your pictures and everything in the corner but that's fine okay so examples of this are when doctors are recommending birth control control to teenage girls who are not even close to being sexually active to just regulate the hormones or veterinarians recommending heartworm prevention in states where it doesn't even exist or at times of the year when it's zero threat or worse to me, yearly or ev even every three-year vaccination when there's no medical research to support it. But what I'm trying to get through to you guys is this is our progressive, it's an epidemic, disease-free, high-income country health mentality. It's the norm. It's not only what we do, but we feel like we're thankful and we're lucky to have it. Go again. Oh, oops. Um, by the way, nature's been regulating our hormones for thousands of years. Maybe if we didn't feed our dogs and our children from plastic bottles laden with hormone dis disruptors or feed our cattle and livestock hormones, livestock hormones, we wouldn't have to worry about regulating periods, boys developing breasts, or thousands of dogs dying from thyroid, pituitary, and adrenal disease. So a large majority of people are taught to use their vets and doctors like they're steering the body's ship of health and longevity. But by us not taking the wheel and steering our own and our, our own and our own dog's ships, we are truly out of control and our lives become part of that pharmaceutical industrial complex matrix. Don't get me wrong, guys. Good medicine is... Good, safe, truly researched drugs and life-saving surgery for things like gastric torsions or getting hit by cars are a godsend. But the layering of drug after drug, vaccine after vaccine, chemical toxins in our food, water, cleaning supplies is creating an absolute perfect storm for cancer and autoimmune diseases. Hence the rise of both those diseases in our dogs and in us. So I know that was a little depressing and I didn't mean for it to be start off, start off raw roundup like saying that but i feel like when we're when we're when we're trying so desperately to uh go a natural route and and make a difference like dogs naturally is to to you know reduce the cancer rates let our dogs live in in situations where they're not in plastic cones their whole entire lives they're not getting cancer when they're four we have to talk about stuff like this because we can we can feed and we can do all of this amazing stuff. But if we keep lying 
on top of each other and being sort of brainwashed into more is better when we're when we're dealing with our animals in in vet clinics we're kind of on this vicious circle so now what we should be doing is let's look how how do we weather this storm and bring the body back into balance and prevent disease and support the and support the environment which to me is is really really important so answer holistic and mindful medicine and again so what we're going to see is we're going to talk about cells and we're now we're going to start to put all of this stuff into into perspective uh the world holistic the word holistic natural has become so common we're now hearing words like balance synergy integrative but what does it really mean there's really an old medical word when i was trying to uh, when i was trying to talk about this this balance in the body which is which is so important um i was thinking like there's there's a word what's this word that i'm trying to think of well it's a really awesome word and i feel it's important because it gets overlooked because of the compartmentalized research that we're seeing all the time or it's too western or too conventional i'm not too sure why but it's such an awesome word and it's so important to use and that word is homeostasis so homeostasis is a state of the steady internal condition maintained by living things. This dynamic state of equilibrium is the condition of optimal functioning for the organism and includes many variables such as body temperature, fluid balance, keep being kept within a preset limit. Other variables include pH of extracellular fluid, concentrations of sodium, potassium, calcium ions, as well as that of blood sugar levels. These need to be regulated despite the changes of environment, diet, or even level of activity. Each of these variables is controlled by one or more regulatory reg regulators or homeostatic mechanisms, which together maintain life. The ultimate cause of all death is extreme irreversible loss of homeostasis. And I, this, this example is a bit strange, but it makes sense. If, if you cut your arm off and you can stop the bleeding, you can actually live without your arm because it brings, a, you can, we can bring the body back into homeostasis or balance. But if you can't stop the bleeding and you continue to lose blood, what actually happens then is you, there's no oxygen process no homeostasis can be can be maintained and you die. So we can live without limbs, but we can't live we can't live if we can't regain that balance or that homeostasis. Over the last 35 years, my focus has been on holistic medicine and finding a way to relieve suffering of all animals, not just our dogs, but but everything. I think this is the key to my constant evolution and goal to learn more to bridge gaps because it keeps me looking at ways that support your dogs at the same time to con continue to support all life including including our planet what i'm constantly humbled by is how intelligent nature is and how really wide the gap is between what we think we know and the real way that nature heals it's almost like the more we try to understand, the more we try to take something natural or nature and stuff it into our box. Instead of us learning from it, we try to manipulate it into Western mindsets. This works amazing in lots and lots of cases, like with nutraceuticals and things like that, when something's very, very sick, like stitching your arm up when you're, you know, if your arm or your leg or your dog's leg gets cut off. It's, it does work amazing in situations like that. But in so many cases, we're missing the point. We're still looking at parts rather than truly looking at putting the body back into balance or focusing on keeping the ultimate homeostasis, which, and really our best teacher of all of this is nature. Look what's happening to our world and our environment. Like just think about it for one minute. Because we thought we knew best, we have destroyed or are destroying nature's homeostasis. It's a huge example of what we do not want to go, what we do not want to go wrong with our dogs or our bodies. The earth to me is teaching us to pay attention in a classroom of the natural flow of life. And it's the perfect way of maintaining balance and health is just to look out there and actually realize like if you think of global warming, what we've actually done is we have destroyed the homeostasis of, of how the planet keeps its balance and, and regulation. So what does all this mean? What does your bot, dog's body contain that is so much like our environment, which lives, regenerates, divides, and dies? 
cells. Cells are the basic building blocks for all living things. Your dog's body is composed of trillions of cells. They're everywhere. They're in organs, bones, blood, tissue. They're the building blocks of absolutely everything that you see on your dog. If you had a, you know, a microscope and went inside, every single thing is, is uh, the building block is built by cells. They provide structure for the body. They take in nutrients from food. They convert those nutrients into energy and they carry out really specialized functions. Cells also contain the body's hereditary material and can make copies of themselves. Every day, more than 50 billion cells die in the body. These are not random events, but part of the finely tuned biological mechanism called programmed cell death. So important. The tight regulation of cell death is necessary to maintain balance of functional cells in our tissues and to prevent infection. If this is impaired, it can have severe consequences. As a recent article about cell death signally pointed out, deregulation of the signaling pathways that trigger cell death can lead to the development of catastrophic diseases such as cancer and autoimmunity, which is too little cell death as well as the degenerative diseases, which is too much cell death. I've often, I've been saying this, I don't even know, way too long just makes me feel old how long I've been saying this, but dogs, human, horses, and cats, pigs, whatever. If you're an animal, a cell is a cell is a cell. What causes disease or creates health is exactly the same. So let's look at what keeps your dog cells healthy, regulated, and basically imbalanced. Soil. Soil-based minerals. Um, so Dr. Linus Pauling, who won the Nobel Prize twice, concluded after years of studying that you can trace every sickness and every disease, every ailment to a mineral deficiency. Mineral depletion is a serious national health concern that affects all beings. And he means all beings. Historical minerals are vital for health to support the physiological process of maintaining life. These were once obtained through food, but now are depleted from our soil, therefore creating health havoc. For those of us feeding our dogs and ourselves as much fresh local food as possible, this does help, but it would be ideal if we could all get our minerals this way, but unfortunately that's no longer possible. Quality of minerals. Doctors and naturopaths have been recommending supplementation of minerals for a very, very long time. Yet the real truth is that the majority of, of them on the market today do not even are not even close to replenishing the needs that are that our bodies or your dog's bodies need. Some of the highest quality mineral supplements you can purchase contain less than 40 minerals and very few trace elements. That sounds like a lot, and it's really not. Organic minerals are created from plants and would typically extract 70 to 80 minerals from the soil, then transfer those minerals into the animals who consume them, like deer or beef or whatever, then to your dog who eats the prey that eats, eats the plant, or even just directly to your dog through the vegetation that they would eat like certain grasses. The right mineral, when it comes to minerals, there's many kinds of many kinds, but be really careful as synthetic minerals will remain in the body and in the system way too long and be, can, can be destructive and super, super toxic to the body. Minerals should act more like water-soluble vitamins, which is one of the reasons that they're, why there is a daily need to replenish them through the natural process of eating food. On the other hand, the correct synthesis of organically derived minerals, and this is so cool, from their natural ionic state which is charged by the Earth's ionic process, feeds the cells and can actually work as chelation therapy by removing toxic minerals or heavy metals actually out of the body. Enter fulvic and humic acid. So when I was researching these minerals, all I could think about seriously is about the ice age. As a kid, I always wanted to hang out with dinosaurs, so it was pretty cool. It's actually really cool because I live, I actually live, I bought this property, and I live right across the ocean from the largest uh, dinosaur dig and, and find in, in Canada. Um, when we think of humic, humic acid, 
Just imagine finding a powerhouse of material that's preserved deep within the earth of organic minerals and trace elements from primal living fruits and vegetables, as well as ancient seaweed. Therefore, and this is like this, I just get goosebumps even when I think about this. Therefore, to reproduce this material chemically is completely unattainable. This could never be produced in a factory chemically. It's, it's, it's so unique. So function of fulvic and humic acid, fundamentally, so here's your cells, our cells, your dog cells, your goat cells, my cow cell. Um, fundamentally, it works on a cellular level, focused on the outside of the cell, where it intercepts toxins and viruses from attaching to the cell. It fights inflammation and helps to derail malignant changes actually in the cell. Its ability to physiologically regulate disease, replenish nutrient levels, and rebalance some very serious pathologies is nothing short from fascinating. Because of its chelation and detoxification attributes, it also has incredible benefits in the gut by eliminating toxic intruders. And this is another thing that I get so excited about because everybody knows like I'm the gut thing. But it's just so it's just fascinating to me how it works along with everything. So it, it helps to eliminate once those intruders are are ingested and and destroyed. It also helps to rid them, rid the body of those to toxicities and those intruders, allowing prime absorption of food and supporting the immune system to work to its optimum level. The king of soil-based minerals actually is fulvic acid. This is getting more like an anthropology seminar, and it's, it, is, it is exciting to me. I don't know if you guys are excited, but I'm excited. It's really like a fossil. So it's, it's a fossil-like acid that's found in unique areas of the world, approximately 200 feet deep in the earth, in the original set of molecules that were created from sea vegetation millions of years ago when the Ice Age um, in Canada covered the mineral rich seabeds. Fulvic acid um, was created by the humification process, which is the process of organic matter that has reached maturity. From then what happens from decomposed plant remains, in this case seaweed, yet over time what happens is that the addition of other organic, and this is a cool, because it's true, ancient fruits, that we don't even have now and ancient vegetation that are assimilated. So actually the earth assimilates it. So that's almost like the earth ingests it. And then with the correct comp compression and age, it forms humic acid. Okay. So that's, that's one thing about minerals. So what else does soil do? Soil based organisms or probiotics. And you guys are going to hear more about this from me in Chicago. I'm really, really getting into to this even more. So the term soil based SBO, I have to be careful I don't say SOBs. SBO stands for the soil based organism and it's used to refer to a new class of probiotic supplements based on the greater understanding of the incredible diversity of the gut microbiota and a deeper appreciation of how helper bacteria work to produce a healthy system. Just as the name suggests, soil based probiotics are probiotics that are found often in the soil. Soil-based bacteria, also known as spore-forming bacteria, has the ability to seed the digestive tract with bacteria which will flourish and support a balanced microbiome. Spores being heat-stable compared to other, other probiotics have a number of advantages over non-spore formers like lactobacillus that can be stored at room temperature in a desiccated form without any negative effects on its viability at all. A second advantage of this of, of these is that the spore is capable of surviving the low pH of a gastric barrier, which is not the case for all species of lactose bacillus. This is huge, you guys, when we're talking about canine acidity gut levels. They have an affinity for more of an acid environment and will not be affected by the high acidity of a dog's stomach. They are therefore, they are therefore enabled to reach the lower GI tract where they will multiply into billions. In principle, spores can be stored indefinitely without refrigeration and the entire dose of the ingested bacteria will reach the small intestinal intact. Uh, SBOs have also been known to be beneficial for autoimmune conditions, sensitive, this is cool too, because there's lots of sense, 
hypersensitive dogs out there. Sensitive dogs that tolerate will tolerate SBOs better than traditional probiotics. And this is especially true for conditions such as histamine intolerance and many allergies and skin disease dogs, which I'm not going to get into why, because I'm going to get into that more um, in Chicago. So I don't want to bore you doing it twice. So SBOs have also been shown to colonize in the gut more effectively than lactic acid bacteria. Um, they're indicated. They indicate they're indicated for the following situations. So the dogs that are not experienced success with traditional lactic-based probiotics. So everyone out there that's been feeding and feeding and feeding probiotics and they're not getting what they want. Repeated courses of antibiotics, chronic digestive issues, and production of natural bacter bacterocins to reduce opportunist opportunistic and harmful bacteria. Unlike lactic acid bacteria, like lactose bacillus, the many bacillus species have their own cycle of spore proliferation and spore release in the gut. This activity continues long after the spore forming bacteria is ingested and creates a truly unique symbiotic relationship in the host, which is your dog's gut. It's pretty, this is also really cool. Um, there, and I have sort of a, why I think this has happening. Um, they're yeast busters, which is why it's the only probiotic I recommend for yeast. Uh, it, it prevents gut colonization by harmful bacteria and fungi, secretes an antimicrobial pe peptide, which is, which is specifically yeast related. And I personally like them because in the past we would be feeding and eating vegetables that still have a ton of dirt on them. I know you guys all know that I am a big one about dogs consuming uh, dirt and, and did a lecture about putting dirt in, in small, small pots. If you live on, if, if you live in an apartment, if you live in a house, putting organic dirt in um, uh, bathtubs, things like that, so that they can go in up bathtubs, little swimming pools, so that they can go in and play in the dirt and actually ingest it. Okay, so let's see what time it is. The C. Um, every time I think of the C, that's what I think. Ah. So marine phytoplankton. So now we're going to go back into minerals. It really, this, this thing really needs its own classification, and you'll see why. Isn't this cool? Look on the side there. I'm talking about cells, and then that's, they look like cells, right? They, well, they are. They're, they're actually not just cells. They're actual a whole little body in its in its own right. But marine phytoplankton is a relatively new area of natural care, but in fact it's an ancient superfood of ocean ocean oh my god, ocean I can't even say that word proportions. I was sounded so pretty when I said it before. Whatever. That has the ability to revolutionize health by harnessing the power of the sea. This superfood could change the way we look at disease prevention and phenomenal health. Marine phytoplankton has been the foundational source of nutrition and food for the ocean since the beginning of time. Phytoplankton, everybody remember this, please, this phytoplankton is how fish produce omega-3. Therefore, without phytoplankton, fish would not contain omega-3. Some strains of phytoplankton have extraordinary amounts of superoxide dismutase. This molecule is considered by many to be the king of antioxidants and the molecule of life. Antioxidants play a significant role in health as they can help control how fast your dog ages by fighting free radicals. Free radicals are responsible for biological oxidation. This is often referred to as, and this is a good, this is a good reference of thinking about it, biological rusting as an effect caused by too much oxygen in the tissues. Not only do free radicals come from pollution and toxins, but they are also produced by inflammation anywhere in the body. No individual dog is without free radical damage. So the more antioxidant protection we offer, the healthier the cells will remain. Um, superfoods have been around for a long time, decades. There's still unfulfilled gaps, though, in nutritional needs. The complete nutrition with many of the phytoplankton strains absorb and resonate with the synergistic way of the body beyond historical superfoods. This gets me, this brings me all the way back into, into looking at like, like what, even when I said about the earth 
kind of consuming the food. It, when we look at this and how um, how things resonate in work and absorb, it's 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 actually it's absolutely fascinating when we look at it truly through the eyes of nature. Um, ba- balanced over time, whole nutrition keeps the body healthy. When food is missing certain nutritional elements, it will be unable to operate properly, leading to malfunction. We can supplement these nutritional elements, yet, just as the word suggests, supplementing means in addition to, not in replacement of. So to be clear, phytoplankton is a whole food. It's absolutely not a supplement. It's an incredible single cell organism that has the entire, entire and in its entirety, has trace minerals, chlorophyll, essential amino acids, omega-3, proteins, uh, carotenoids, antioxidants, when I talk fast, I have to like really slow down, amino acids and vitamins. It's bioavailability in this again, there's certain things that I really want you to pick up on in here. It's bioavailability, which is the ability for the body to absorb it is remarkable as it's smaller than a red blood cell. So lab results show that phytoplankton directly nourishes the cell's engine called the mitochondria. The other thing that it does is like you guys all know that I feel like the majority of people and animals are walking around with really, really unhealthy guts. So even if you're getting something that is really nutritious, the ability for the body to actually absorb that can be very difficult. So when an animal is really sick, this phytoplankton is amazing because it actually absorbs through the mucous membranes. It doesn't even have to go into the gut to be absorbed. So this in turn means the body can receive the much needed elements through phytoplankton's micronutrients by giving the body its tools it's need. It has the ability to heal itself. So in summary, complete nutrition is universal and it actually follows the laws of cause and effect. So what does it play in your dog's health? Again, because of the mass food production, our soils are now extremely depleted of minerals. So here we go back into minerals being sometimes the biggest cause of disease. And without them, we have a, what we call in homeopathy, an obstacle to cure because we're not paying attention to the cells. Um, by incorporating phytoplankton as part of the animals of your animal's daily food, not supplements, you're supporting their entire body and health and longevity. Here's some areas that it can target, which is skin health, which is like so many dogs has been researched in human medicine for eczema and atopic dermatitis. So how many dogs have been diagnosed with atopic dermatitis? Mobility and gel health. Why? Because it feeds the cells. Doesn't just um, take down inflammation. It actually creates new cell health, new cells to be produced. Improved cellular function that leads to healthier organs like liver and thyroid. It decreases inflammation. It supports digestion. It can increase energy, stamina, or it can decrease hyperactivity and anxiety and detoxification. And obviously, we all know about gut health and anxiety. It's completely, completely, completely related. Well, same holds true with this. The healthier that um, the gut is, the more it's supported with the detoxification process, the healthier and more stable the mind and the emotions are going to be. When you're looking for phytoplankton, um, be very, very careful because any food or any oil that comes from the sea sadly comes from, has a very real concern of radiation that's been entered into the Pacific Ocean due to Fukushima in addition to all the other bodies of water with toxic leaking from plastic, gas, and oil spills. So when you're looking for a phytoplankton, Try to get it completely sustainable, which means it has to grow on land. You don't want to be detrimental to the oceans um, if we're stealing food from the oceans because the oceans survive on phytoplankton. They eat the fish, the seals, the whales, the the turtles, everything eats phytoplankton. So you want to make sure that it's that it's grown sustainably on land. Um, free, of any, free of any radiation, heavy metals, or toxins. It should be non-GMO, obviously, and vegan. There should not be any fillers of any kind in it. And you want to find the strains that contain the highest amount of superoxide dismutase as you can. So this is, I just got to quickly talk about this. I keep looking at my time. But this is where I really have to just add my thoughts about fish oil. Um, 
I 100% agree because this can be a really, really intense situation and talk and whatever. And lots of people agree and disagree about stuff. But I agree with the benefits of omega-3 and DHA, 100%. What I don't agree with is that your dog or we need to meet what the amount that we need to eat to get, hold on, agree that, that your dog or we are meant to get it just through fish oil or in the amounts of cur- that's currently recommended in order to be beneficial. We would be eating so, we would be consuming fish all day long and your dog fish all day long because it's processed. Because to get a tablespoon of fish oil, you have no idea how much fish that they have to, you would have to consume to get that much. So something's wrong. Something's wrong. If we need to eat that much to keep our inflammatory response balanced, something's really wrong with that picture. Um, it's So what we have to look at is we're using it sort of as a band-aid, but it's, in my opinion, the natural natural food like elk, deer, beaver, et cetera, that wolves had eaten in abundance has abundant omega-3. It actually has as much omega-3 as your dog needs to eat. It wasn't until we started feeding grain to livestock that the balance of omega-6 and omega-3 became not only lacking, but extremely dangerous to the human cardiovascular system, which is what we did the research. So I'm saying human and inflammatory reactions, but it's the same with your dog. This is a prime example of what I was talking about before, of taking natural medicine and using it as a Band-Aid instead of looking at the reason why it's happening. To me, this is so unnatural. It's not natural. Fish oil today is a really risky business. There's some products on the market that are reputable, but they're really, really far and few between. How can we say that we're into natural rearing or natural medicine uh, or an animal lover or support the planet when we know without a doubt that in 10 years, I have really close friends that are <clears throat> that are salmon biologists, that we are not going to have any orca whales. We, they will be extinct if something's not done today about the overfishing of the ocean. Um, and if you really don't care about orcas, which is your, you know, your call and that's up to you, then what about the fact that when there's no fish, because there will not be any fish oil for dogs or for people, except the ones that are from mutated, genetically altered farmed fish, which actually has a cellular disposition of Frankenstein and a genetic and genetic viral coding. Like really, how healthy is that going to be? There's so much money right now going into the investigation and the research to find a way to replace fish oil or to mimic fish oil through synthetics or genetically farmed farmed fish. And like, it's just going to be a nightmare for that. That's just going to be the most toxic thing that we could possibly assume. It's going to be, think, everyone's going to be thinking, oh, it's great. Just as the same way we thought that synthetic vitamins and synthetic minerals were great. And now we realize that they oxidate our cells and cause more harm than actual good. So I'm not, again, I'm not saying that dogs don't need fish oil and omega-3. I'm saying that there has to be a more specific, appropriate, sustainable, ethical way to do it. So for those who are interested, here's a study um, showing the amount of omega-3 in wild meat or grass-fed beef that is actually more optimal and actually for dogs, in my opinion, way more bioavailable and works in a synergistic way to actually, that it would actually be for a dog. So air, um, which I'm going to run out of because I'm talking so fast so that I can get through this. Um, Airtime, it's free. So this is where I'm going to get into some stuff that is really, really helpful for cells, really helpful for cells that doesn't cost any money. It's natural and you can do. So wolves often travel to 20 to 30 miles per day, but can cover over 100 miles in a day when their prey is scarce. Wolves usually travel at a lope and can move in this manner for hours at a speed of five to six miles per hour. Deep breathing and exercise actually actually improve cell health. So I really am trying to educate you guys about it not just, well, I'm going to get into a little bit more, but, but what can you do for your dog and yourselves? That, are, that is truly going to make you healthier, that isn't difficult and is available. 
Um, there are more than 300 types of cells and every one will react positively. And here's some examples. So muscles, voluntary muscles, I have to move this over. Um, voluntary muscle cells, uh, cells of the walls of the artery, making them strong and more elastic. Skin cells, very important, to, will react to various types of stimulation, including breathing and exercise. Bones, vigorous exercises, causes the cells of the bone to request more bone material from the extracellular fluid and deposit it into the bone matrix which strengthens and mineralizes the bones, keeping them healthy and strong. Anti-gravity muscles, muscles for balance and posture, these cells are activated simply with the average steady body movement. So just, just moving around, just getting up from your computer and playing with your dog. Vestibular, vestibular, vestibular syndrome is really big in, in older dogs. A lot of dogs get it. So the vestibular system of the inner ear adapts to physical motion. So it keeps that system moving. So the more your dogs hear like birds and different kinds of uh, different kinds of sounds actually help the cells of the inner ear. Ligaments, although possibly slower and a tad different muscles and bones than muscles and bones, connective tissue research is now showing that exercise will tighten and strengthen the ligaments in your dog's body. So with exercise, it can't, like we're, we're talking about just, just um, any amount that you can get into your dog and with you, it really helps. So exercise breath and another thing that the air and breathing and exercise does is it helps the lymphatic system. Your dog's lymphatic system is a vital system of the body and it directly responds to exercise and breath. The lymphatic system is, an intera is interactive with and connected to every single organ in your dog and is related to the immune function and its efficiency. It's kind of like your dog's internal housekeeper, vacuuming and sucking up garbage, toxins, and excess, excess fluid from the intracellular fluid of every single organ and tissue. It then clears this waste through the proper drainage flow. When this flow is a flow or elimination process becomes blocked due to congestion or severe degeneration, which comes from sitting stagnant and still and not enough breath in order in order to move the lymphatic system, and they don't breathe heavy enough if they're just lying around. The most supportive and preventive measure that you can do with your dog to keep the system healthy is actually externally massaging them, lymphatic drainage, and really vigorous exercise. In vet medicine, we say that in order to keep your dogs healthy, two hours a day of exercise is needed. Of course, this is dependent on the breed and age, but even if it's 30 minutes a day, this doesn't mean the rest of the 23 and a half hours, they should be locked in an apartment or a house with nothing to do. Dogs are social pack animals that need to be engaged. I can't tell you guys enough. You are their packs and they need to be engaged full time with your life, no matter what that means. There's loads of ways of doing this, getting dog walkers, going to daycare, friends with benefits, meaning your friends come over with their dogs and they can come and play. And last but not least is love. And I talk about this a lot, so I'm going to fly through this, and that's oxytocin. But for those that haven't heard this, please listen. And for those that have heard this, please listen some more because it really is important. Um, it's been called the love drug, the feel-good hormone. I'm going to tell you how it affects the cells because this is all about cells and keeping our cells health, your dog and our cells healthy. It's been classed as the most amazing molecule of, in the world, but what it really is is it's a neuropeptide that inhibits stress and induces activity of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access, and it's increasingly becoming recognized as for its role in bonding, socialization, socialization, and stress relief. This hormone has the ability to de decrease cortisol and blood pressure, decrease inflammation and pain, and used to treat anxiety, post-traumatic stress, depression, debilitating shyness, and now is extensively medically researched and looking into its role in cancer and prevention. And I personally think this is super important for anything like Cushing's disease in Addison's. In vitro, oxytocin inhibits 
proliferation of neoplastic cells of the epithelial, mammary, and endometrial nervous or bone origin expressing oxytocin receptor. In Australia, the National University is looking at using oxytocin as a therapy in lung cancer, which is the number one cause of cancer. You guys- Sorry, Julie. Uh, I'm going to jump in real quick. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to give you a, a little warning on time. Uh, yeah, so just, perfect. Thank awesome. you. Sorry. All right. It's good. That's why I'm like really talking fast. Now I'm <laughs> getting. Okay. So um, naturally oxytocin is produced through the gaze of the mother's eyes. And so basically the whole thing about this, you guys, is that, that it has been, it's been researched and we know that that gaze that creates that loop happens with dogs. It's been proven. There's the study on the bottom. Um, it's it's incredible because it's interspecies bonding, which is the first time this has ever happened. So what it means is is it's really for real that the deep feeling that you feel when you when you are looking into your dog's eyes can actually prevent and prevent cancer and actually in treatment of cancer. And what I just want to say is that it is real medicine. It's not belief or faith or speculation. It's hard to imagine that something that's free and feels so good has zero side effects and can be so important to health. And it's really hard for people to think about this. And this brings me back to the pharmaceutical part because we believe that everything come, has to come from the outside, that we have to get it from the outside. We don't, we don't believe that it could be from, our, from the inside. And that the emotional health and well-being is part of all of that and contributes to the balance of or homeostasis. So, um, again, go out and speak your mind and talk about the love your, of your dog and tell people what helps with homeostasis. And as you can see, when we incorporate all the unaltered, non-genetically modified minerals begin to integrate things that are part of our inherent gifts like love hormones exercise and air we can support the natural physiology of the body just like physiology of nature keeps our dogs lives healthy happy balanced and thriving on this amazing planet that we share so when we look at soil sea air love and we look at a cell which is the basic building blocks of the entire body with those four things, you can feed, build, detoxify, de-stress the cells of your dog. Okay, I'm done. That was fast. <laughs> it was like, you were out, actually, I'm quite impressed. It was uh, awesome, Julie, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, for those of you that wanna see more uh, from Julie, we're about to jump onto the round table in the next minute. So um, uh, at this point, if you wanna go come back to this one, uh, this keynote, the recording for it is gonna stay in this um, page that you're in right now. Go back to the previous page and click the um, round table and we will see you there in just a minute. See you Bye soon. guys.